Imagine one day you are working your normal job, and then all of a sudden a metal rod shoots straight into your head and you survive. But your life is changed forever. Few stories are as fascinating and enduring as that of Phineas Gage, a man whose life was forever changed by a single, fateful event. Join me on a journey as we unravel the mysterious case of Phineas Gage and explore its profound implications for our understanding of the human mind. Phineas Gage was a railroad construction foreman working in Vermont in the mid-19th century. His life took a dramatic turn on September 13, 1848, when a catastrophic accident changed everything. On that fateful day, Gage was tamping down explosive powder into a hole with a metal rod when the powder detonated unexpectedly. The six kilogram metal rod entered the left side of Gage's face in an upward direction, just forward of the angle of the lower jaw, continuing upward outside the upper jaw and possibly fracturing the cheekbone. It passed behind the left eye, through the left side of the brain, then completely out the top of the skull, through the frontal bone. The tamping iron shot through his head and landed point first some 80 feet away, smeared with blood and brain. Accounts then say Gage was thrown onto his back and gave some brief convulsions of the arms and legs, but spoke within a few minutes, walked with little assistance, and sat upright in an ox cart for the three quarters of a mile ride to his lodgings in town. While en route, Gage even made an entry in his time book, the record of his crew's hours and wages. About 30 minutes after the accident, physician Edward H. Williams found Gage sitting in a chair outside the hotel, and people gathered around him in disbelief. An account of the physician states, Mr. Gage, during the time I was examining this wound, was relating the manner in which he was injured to the bystanders. I did not believe Mr. Gage's statement at that time, but thought he was deceived. Mr. Gage persisted in saying that the bar went through his head. Mr. Gage got up and vomited. The effort of vomiting pressed out about half a teacup full of the brain, through the exit hole at the top of the skull, which fell upon the floor but the patient bore his sufferings with the most heroic firmness. He recognized me at once and said he hoped he was not much hurt. He seemed to be perfectly conscious, but was getting exhausted from the hemorrhage. His person and the bed on which he was laid were literally one gore of blood. The doctor then shaved the scalp around the region of the tamping iron's exit, removed coagulated blood, small bone fragments, and an ounce or more of protruding brain. After probing for foreign bodies and replacing two large, detached pieces of bone, Harlow closed the wound with adhesive straps, leaving it partially open for drainage. The entrance wound in the cheek was bandaged only loosely for the same reason. A wet compress was applied, then a nightcap, then further bandaging to secure these dressings. Harlow also dressed Gage's hands and forearms, which along with his face had been deeply burned and ordered that Gage's head be kept elevated. Despite all these injuries, Gage insisted to the doctor that he did not care to see his friends, as he shall be at work in a few days. However, from there on out, Gage's personality changed rapidly and unpredictably, and dramatic events unfolded. On the morning after the accident, Gage's mother and uncle visited, and while he was still able to recognize them, he was blunt and uncaring of their presence. On the next day, an account of his doctor stated that he lost control of his mind and became decidedly delirious. Gage physically was stable and healthy, despite doctors' worries. However, the weeks following his accident, he was described as a completely different person. Twelve days after the accident, Gage was reported to seldom speak unless spoken to, and then answered only in monosyllables. On the thirteenth day, the globe of the left eye became more protuberant, and his eye tissue became infected with fungus pushing out rapidly from the internal canthus as well as from the wounded brain and coming out at the top of the head. On the 14th day, doctors were beginning to lose hope as the exhalations from the mouth and head were horribly foul-smelling. He was almost in a comatic state but would answer in monosyllables if he wanted to. He would not take nourishment unless strongly urged. His friends and attendants were in hourly expectancy of his death, and had his coffin and clothes in readiness. However, in the weeks following his health revived, although Gage himself refused to stay stationary 
and walked around the town every day except Sunday. He then returned to his family in New Hampshire and was regularly found working at their farm, enjoying his own company, and talking to himself as he lived out the rest of his days. Twelve years after his injury, on the 21st of May, 1860, Phineas Gage died of an epileptic seizure at the age of 36. Once known as a handsome, smooth-talking gentleman, Gage's personality changed entirely after his accident, giving newfound knowledge into the human mind and presenting one of the most interesting case studies in psychological history. But what conclusions were made from this case study? Following the accident, Gage's friends and acquaintances noted a dramatic shift in his personality. Once described as reliable and industrious, Gage became impulsive, irritable, and prone to fits of rage. This was found out to be a result of his missing and damaged frontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that controls behavior and personality. Gage's case provided crucial insights into the localization of brain function and the role of the frontal lobe in regulating personality and behavior. Scientists then drew from this the concept that specific functions are localized to particular areas or regions of the brain. The frontal lobe was found to be involved in executive functions such as decision-making, planning, problem-solving, impulse control, and voluntary movements throughout the body, of which Phineas Gage lost the control of as the frontal lobe was the main part of the brain damaged, and scientists drew from this that the frontal lobe wasn't essential to human survival. The parietal lobe was found to process sensory information from the body, including touch, temperature, and pain as well as control spatial awareness, perception, and orientation. The temporal lobe was found to process auditory information received from the ears, enabling perception and interpretation of sounds, as well as the formation and consolidation of long-term memories, as well as language comprehension and understanding. And the occipital lobe was found to be in control of processing visual information received from the eyes, and enabling perception of shapes, colors, and motion. By studying Gage's case, researchers gained valuable insights into the complexities of the human brain and the profound impact of brain injury on behavior and cognition. Phineas Gage's story is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the extraordinary capacity of the brain to adapt and recover from injury. His nonchalant attitude to his life-threatening injury and his loyalty to his co-workers to make sure they were looked after is truly heroic and inspiring. His case continues to inspire and inform research in psychology, neuroscience, and medicine to this day, and this case study is readily taught in science and psychology classes all over the world. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed and would like to see more like this, please like and subscribe.